Hello friends, welcome back to A Drill and a Dream, and welcome to part two of my question and answer video series here. If you don't know me, my name is Abby, and I have been working on renovating a 150-year-old-ish house. This one right here. She gorgeous, I know. So, we've been working hard on renovating. It's been almost, almost two years of renovating this house, and it's starting to really come together and look like a home, so I'm super excited about it. But I've been doing a question and answer video to answer some of the questions that I got in comments and if you missed the part one of this video I would definitely suggest checking it out. We answered questions talking about purchasing my fixer upper, exterior landscaping plans, future a drill and a dream plans, moving in, and keeping up with the renovation. But today on this very video we're going to be talking about learning new skills, design and decor, heating and plumbing, budget, and our favorite, J. So let's start right in. Learning new skills. You have shared that your day job is an office-like one, but I wonder, since you've been introduced to so many new skills, if for some strange reason you had to choose a trade or apprentice or become licensed in a new career, which would you pick? Electrician, builder, plumber, etc.? Well, none of those. <laughs> um, I would say... Let's see here. I've learned a lot of new things. They were all interesting to learn, good skills to have. I don't think there's any, been anything um, building wise that I'm like, oh, I want to do this full time. <laughs> but um, some have been better than others for sure. I think that the, okay, if I was going to like quit my day job and do something full time, it'd probably be more on the like YouTube end of things um, at this point in my life. But home-wise, definitely the thing that I like the most and I have found the most enjoyment in is, which doesn't surprise me, is the design aspect of it. The building stuff, um, I really like to be able to do it, but it's not like none of the things that I've done so far are like, oh my goodness, I just want to do this all of my life for so fun. Um, that's not kind of the deal. But designing, designing the whole house and the whole planning, I really like to plan and design things. Um, that has been a lot of fun and I've really enjoyed, I know I'm just getting into like the finishing detail sort of stuff, um, but that's definitely something that I'm excited for. Although um, I do get a little overwhelmed with all of the um, decisions that need to be made, but it's definitely like more exciting than you know, ripping out old stuff or building walls or sheetrocking. Sheetrocking was definitely my favorite out of everything. <coughs> Electrical was, well, uh, tearing out the demo was my least favorite, I would say. And electrical was my second least favorite. Plumbing, I mean, I did some of it, but not enough really to say so. But sheetrock, insulation, eh not the best but sheet rock I really did enjoy because you could really see such a progress and the mudding and taping I don't mind but it is definitely a long process but the whole design aspect I definitely prefer how many sheets of drywall have you purchased so far another thing I should have checked before I started uh, filming this but I will put it on the screen um, oh, this is a good question because so many of the comments have been like don't sheet rock or mud and stuff you know uh, hire that out so the question is, did you always know you were going to have you were going to install it or did you get a quote to have it installed taped and mudded? Um no, I did not get any quotes. Yeah, the sheetrocking seemed like an obvious thing for me to put up the sheetrock is no big deal. The mudding, I basically I said to Jay, Jay, everyone says that I should have hire this out. Do you think that I should or do you think it's something that we can do and it'll be fine? And he said we can do it. So that's all. That's all she wrote, we just did it. Did you imagine yourself being as hands-on as you are and learning so many skills? What skill are you most proud of? Um, yeah, yeah, from the start I was like, um, feeling like I was gonna be hands-on because, you know, I was never planning on just like getting a whole team of people to come and do the house, you know? So I always planned on like doing a lot of the work myself or doing what I could myself. So yeah, I always, expected to be hands-on, but um, what skill am I most proud of? Um, 
I would say probably, probably sheet rocking. I feel pretty competent in that at this point. Okay, now we're moving on to my favorite topic, design and decor. First question, what would you say your decorating style is? I am guessing organic modern with a touch of vintage decor. Interesting. Okay, so I've been watching a lot of decor design videos recently. Um, it comes and goes like if I'm into watching. Sometimes I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to watch a design, like anything like fixer upper -y on TV. I'm like, I'm living that life. I don't want to watch it. But every once in a while, I'll get like a desire and I'll watch YouTube or whatever and I'll be like, you know, all these kitchen regrets or design for this, blah, 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 blah. And lately I've been watching a lot of that and I had never actually heard of Organic Modern until like last week so it's funny that this person said this. But um, yes, I would say Organic Modern is an accurate statement. Um, basically, I really like basic kind of Scandinavian, I would say as a general house rule, Scandinavian, um, white walls and light floors, minimal stuff. Um, but. I notice that I like a touch of like bohemian actually like with some things like with a lot of like rattan or like baskets stuff like that and not like a lot because a lot of times bohemian is like a lot going on and I like a little going on but um, just like a touch of that I notice myself liking and also like mid-century modern furniture sometimes not, not nothing crazy but like the legs and the different just a lot of the furniture pieces I like. So I think that Organic Modern is kind of a mix of all those things, so it does kind of, according to the one video I happened to watch, so don't take me for knowing anything, um, but according to the one video I watched, it did seem like my style quite a bit. So this person is right. I don't know about the vintage decor so much, but maybe, like I do like some like vintage like prints, like, or painting sort of things, but not a ton of vintage. What kind of countertops in the kitchen are you thinking? Okay, I am thinking um, quartz, and I'm thinking that basically based on some random things that I've seen that quartz seems like a good option. It's like um, durable and you don't have to do much with it, it just kind of is there and it's good. So I'm thinking like a white with like a little bit of marbling or something maybe, um, but mostly white quartz is what I'm thinking. But I actually heard about this um, quarry that's nearby here, like a couple hours away, and so I would really like to go, and a friend of mine has quartz countertops that she got from there, and um, a couple of people have gotten countertops, and I think that sounds like a really cool road trip, whether or not I actually end up getting it from them or not, but you can kind of see the whole like slabs and stuff, um, and I didn't know we had anything like that around here, so I'm super interested in checking that out. Have you thought about colors you're going to paint the rooms? Yes, white. I've actually been watching some videos too on like what color white to choose, so hopefully I'll get a nice one. <laughs> Basically, I think every every room is just going to be the same color white, so hope you're not bored. <laughs> I'm excited to see you pick out kitchen cabinets and appliances. What's the plan for them? So, many, many moons ago, in one of my very first videos, if you were watching way back then, you would have seen that I actually already have cabinets. So I found some cabinets on Craigslist. I still think they were like a really great deal. It was like a whole bunch of them for like $800 and they are really nice. Like they're very nice quality. So that is what I'm going to be putting in with the white countertops and gorgeous. Really pumped. For appliances, I'm going to do stainless steel. I've been looking at them some and I don't know. It's I don't know which one specifically I'm going to get, but I am thinking of stainless steel for the stove. There are some stoves that I've found that have air fryers in them. I don't know if any of you guys have those or have used those or have thoughts about that, but that sounds really cool. I don't have an air fryer right now and I don't want any more small appliances in my life, but I do think that I would use it if it was like a part of the stove. That sounds great. So that and the dishwasher and the sink, that's basically it. Not sink, fridge, guys, fridge. Also. So my fridge itself is small, you know, the hole that we have for it, but I'm thinking about doing, my initial thought was there are some that have French doors, but they're still the same small size, but I'm wondering if any of you, any of you guys have those. I know my sister-in-law, I believe, just got one like that, and she doesn't love it, so I'm wondering if any of you guys have thoughts on that. 
Hi, Abby. What are you thinking for window treatments in the house? Curtains, blinds, plantation shutters, or maybe something along those lines? Um, I, some places I think I'll have curtains, but some places might be hard, actually, with radiators and stuff like that. I don't know what the protocol is for that. But I've been looking at, so initially I always wanted some of those, I don't even know what they're called, but like they're like little blinds and they come down and they're really nice. But the more I actually think about it, I'm thinking of not doing those because I just don't know that they fit as well with the vibe of the house. And I'm leaning towards, um, what are they called? What are they called? Venetian? Venetian blinds? Let me look at Pinterest real quick. No, not, wait. I don't know. I'll show you a picture of what I'm talking about. I don't know what they're called. Roman. Maybe Roman blinds. Yeah, I think Roman blinds. But I think that those would look nice. Um, and they still, they're pretty cool. Like, they still, like, they don't have, like, things, strings hanging down, you know, and you can push them up and stuff. I like that. Are you going to use the same color on your window frames as the color of your doors? Okay. This has been something that's been rolling through my mind lately about blind, um, not blinds, about frames and baseboards and stuff like that. So initially my thought was always that I wanted wood colored window frames, baseboards, trimmings because I thought that, I feel like it's, it would give a little bit more interest than just white everywhere. But here's the thing, I want my, I want my floors and my trim and my interior doors to be light colored and my outside doors are darker. And so I was like, how on earth am I gonna do that? Because like in the living room, it's the side, it's like the side entry door and then the laundry room right next to it. And I know that like mixing wood is okay. I mean, it's whatever you like guys. It's whatever I like, I'm living here. But, but I'm like, how do I do that? Because do, should I not have wood colored trim around the wood doors? And I can't have a light colored wood trim around the dark colored wood door. Like that would look weird. I think. And so after much thought, this is what I came up with. I'm thinking I'm going to do wood colored trim around the windows and the baseboards. I'm not 100% sure around, okay, so the, the exterior doors, I'm gonna do white around them because I don't want it to be a different colored wood and I don't want the dark colored wood trim just around those doors. I think I'm just gonna do white and it'll blend in, it'll be the same color as the wall and I don't think you'll really see it. I'm not convinced, like I'm not 100% sure about the just the part around the door, I might leave white on all the doors. Or I might, on the regular light colored wood doors, do the regular light colored wood, same as everywhere else. I feel like I kind of need to see it to know for sure, but that's where I'm leaning. Either way, tentatively, I'm leaning on my trim being a light colored wood, as well as the interior doors. Which leads to the next question, have you ordered the doors yet from the Amish man? No but it's on my to-do list. Okay, when you add the long shelf in the downstairs bathroom, will you be making it out of the same pine slab that you're making the vanity out of? Yes, I mean, not the same tree, but pine, yes. And um, coming up soon, I'm gonna be working on the vanity, so check that out. It's going to be all stained the same color, so the vanity, the, the, the shelf, and also the wood on front, in the front of the tub are all gonna be stained the same color. Hopefully. Have you picked out all of your lighting fixtures yet? Also no, but I have been browsing. Have you considered built-in bay window seats with storage under the seats? Yes, I've considered it. Um, I think at least to start with, I'm planning on putting like two wingback chairs and like a little side table in the bay window. Um, and that might change down the road, but that's what I'm gonna start with at least. Uh, will you be purchasing new furniture or using what you already own? Um, I have some pieces that I plan on using and some pieces, pieces I plan on purchasing. I'll need a new, like, beds. Our beds are small. It's a small apartment. Um, new couch, because ours is pretty, it's not the best. I don't know. Some things just don't 
won't sit in here well. Some of the chairs I have, um, the dining room table I have, so probably a lot of the stuff might work at first, but then I'll be slowly seeing what I can buy down the road as things come up perfectly. Or maybe I'll get some sponsorship things, which would be ideal. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll see. Definitely some new purchases and some old stuff. Yeah. Okay, the biggest question that I got overall was the flooring. What are we gonna do about floors? Which is a very good question and I haven't really told you guys yet. So this is a big moment. Basically, initially my thought was to refinish all of the floors. Um, some of the floors are better than others. The floor in the living room is while it's a little bit slanted, it's quite nice. Like, you can tell it's a really nice wood floor. Whereas the floor over here in the kitchen and dining room is not as nice. And the some of the areas, like the pantry and the coat closet, don't have any floor at all. I mean, obviously there's something. It doesn't just fall through the, to the basement, but it needs a new floor. So what I decided for down here is that we are going to stop the floor. We're gonna keep the floor that's in the living room and um, refinish that. But then all of the stuff from the living room over, we're going to put a new wood floor using my dad's lumber um, on top of what's already here. And it actually works out really nice because there's a step down now. And I believe that by doing this, it will eliminate, I mean, there might be like a little bit of a slight dip or whatever going into like threshold, going into room to room. But um, it's gonna eliminate the like one inch dip that there is now. So I believe that it will make it all a nice smooth, level which will be really cool and um these floors just aren't the best so it'll be good to have that really um redone because there's weird lines in them and it's just it's not even if i sanded it down it's still going to be wavy and it's not going to be there's going to be these lines that can't change and they're going in different directions and some places just need a floor anyway so that's the plan for over here upstairs I have not decided yet. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards doing the same thing maybe. The floors upstairs, they still have weird lines that aren't ideal and like they're not layered together like they should be. Yeah. So the bathroom and laundry room I'm planning on doing tile and the bathroom upstairs I'm planning on doing tile. Um, yes, and we are planning on doing radiant floor heat in the addition of the bathroom laundry room so that'll keep the the floor is nice and cozy. But we will be definitely keeping you updated on more of the floor stuff as we start that project, which will be, you know, coming out before we know it. Although we need, we need the lumber first, so who knows when it'll actually be coming up. I need to get the square footage of the floors for my dad. But moving along, heating and plumbing. I've been wondering if you are not going to have radiators in the bedroom, if you're going to have radiators in the bedroom, if not, how will you, how will you heat them? Um, yeah, that's the plan is to not have radiators in the bedroom. There's one in the hallway and in the bathroom upstairs and there are vents um, from downstairs to upstairs for the heat to rise. I know a lot of people have been concerned about that, but like my parents' house don't have any radiators upstairs at all, like never have. So I don't know. I think it's okay. Like obviously the doors can stay open if it's cold. I don't know, I like to sleep in the cold, so hopefully it'll be fine. Do you plan on showing the heating system in detail? Um, I will show you what I can of it. I don't, depending on if um, like my heating guys are here and they can explain some stuff, that would be great. But I will show you the boiler and stuff sometime. And once we get the radiators hooked up, I don't really know how all of that works and it all kind of depends on if I'm here when things happen, so we'll see. Have you gotten plumbing done in the kitchen yet? A lot of people have asked about that. So all of the plumbing in the kitchen is actually um, gonna be in the middle of the room. It's all gonna be in the island, the sink and the dishwasher. So that's gonna be coming up straight from the basement and therefore it's not in yet. Um, it'll be put in later, but nothing is in the walls. Okay, this person is curious if I'm planning to cool, to cool my home in the summer months or if you are far up enough that you don't really get that much heat. I know there are un window units and mini splits which have, which we've thought about for parts of our old home of watching your channel. Thanks. Um, yes, I have thought about it some. It's, yeah, we are, it doesn't get that hot here. I mean, there are a few days 
where it's hot usually every summer, <laughs> like really hot. But it's not like the South where it's, most homes don't have AC. It's just not really a thing here because it's not that hot. That being said, we got a um, window unit thing for our house that we live at now, me and my sister. And it did change my life in such a beautiful way because, so it was just like a big window unit and it basically cools down the entire house because it's kind of in the middle and it's great. So it's like 100 degrees outside, not really, rarely gets 100, but it's like 90 degrees outside and you go inside and it's just like cold and you want to put on your blanket and that is ideal for me, especially because, I don't know about you guys, but I don't ever want to do anything outside if I don't have somewhere cold to come home to. Like, I don't want to go out for a walk or a bike ride or something unless I know that I can come home and it's nice and cool. Because if you're just hot all the time, that's a horrible way to live. So, therefore, yeah, I have thought about it. And I'm planning, um, I thought about the, like, the things that you put on the wall, and I couldn't find any place on the wall that I wanted it. So, my best thought is put an AC unit in the back hallway window, and I bet that would do a good, with it being so insulated and stuff, I bet that would um, cool down the house quite a bit. And, like, even the one that we have that's you know, big. I think that that would do the trick, honestly. Maybe it's not like walking into a fridge, but it's definitely cooler than outside, so I'm good with that. Okay, the big question that people have asked me from day one is about budgets. So it's hard to know exactly how much you should share about this, you know, to everyone in the world on YouTube. Um, it's kind of that weird thing, but I also understand, you know, you wanting to know, okay, Here's this rando girl doing it. Can I do it too? Um, and to that I would say, I don't know. <laughs> like, every situation and scenario is so different that it's hard, it's hard to say. Like, I'm not going to be a financial advisor to you on that. But, how am I funding the renovations? You seem to have an endless supply of funds to purchase materials. I wouldn't say endless. But um, I am very thankful that I've had enough money to go this far and hopefully to finish the project. But how am I funding this renovation? Mm, okay, well, I've been saving money. I would say the best way to fund any project like this is to save the money um, by not spending it. I guess that's, that's the gist of it. But, um, so I started with, you know, some money that I had saved up and honestly, YouTube has been a big help for me as well. So not everybody has that. I realize that. That's why I say like, <laughs> I don't know that I'm a good example. Not that I'm making millions and millions of dollars on YouTube by any means, but it definitely has been helpful in this renovation. Am I over or under budget? Um, okay, so I did start out with a budget that I had a spreadsheet all. I use a spreadsheet for everything. Everything I purchase, I put in the spreadsheet. It makes the little number in the budget, what I have available to spend, go down and, and everything like that. And um, yeah, so when I started and I made my budget, I really was making stuff up majorly. Like, I don't know, <laughs> like people say to make a budget and I'm like, okay, but I'm just like a rando girl who knows nothing about building anything. And you want me to guess how much I'm gonna spend in sheetrock? I don't know, you know, it's so ridiculous. So what I did was I went through everything and guessed as good as I could. Like, you know, I tried to figure out what the walls were and I looked up a price for sheetrock and I guessed that. And so everything that I had guessed, then I added 30% to everything as my budget. Um, and am I over or under budget? I mean, some things I'm under budget, most things I would say I'm over budget. But I will say this, when I started this project, I was going into it with a mindset of, okay, I have this much money or whatever and I'm wanting to do this renovation. But things have changed a lot since then. I mean, at that point, I didn't have a YouTube channel and my financial situation was just different than it is now. And so some things I've spent more, well, some things you can't help it. I mean, it's like, okay, you want to sheetrock the whole house? You have to buy for enough sheetrock for the whole house. But some things I have decided to go with more expensive things because I have the money for it now, whereas I maybe wouldn't have chosen to do that if I didn't. You know, you have to make those decisions um, and things change. You know, I wasn't 
I didn't know if my YouTube channel was going to be successful and make any money, <laughs> you know, like just being honest with you. And um, it does make some money. And like I said, it's, I'm not a millionaire by any means. I'm just a regular girl. And the other thing is, I have just a different situation than a lot of people do. I'm going into this with a lot of different ends. I mean, my dad, you know, all of the lumber, you know, stuff. If I had to buy this at the store, it would cost so much more than, you know, having this sweet hookup. Um, and that's the same for a lot of different things. I mean, setting up the heating system, I get a good deal because I work at a heating company, you know. And I knew these things going into it, and that's one of the reasons why I decided to do this. Like, I knew that I had these ins, and without these ins, it would cost a lot more, and I may not have went for this project. But I know this isn't very helpful giving you any solid answers, but this is just my story. But to answer your question, yes, I am over budget on a lot of different things, um, but it was kind of done intentionally. I feel like I don't really want to give details on how much I bought for the house or even my budgets because, like I said, well, for one, it varies so much based on location. Um, like, where I am, it, things are going to cost a lot less than, like, you know, Los Angeles or something like that. You know, places where people <laughs> want to live. <laughs> um, this is a very economically depressed area where I live. And um, so things are just so wildly different. It's like comparing apples to oranges. I, there's really no point in me telling you because it's just not the same. Um, and even that goes with building supplies and stuff like that. Um, it's just weird. Where you are makes such a difference. It's just very so much. And I know that I have all of these things, which I'm very, very thankful for, that have made, um, made this so much more possible for me to do as just a random single girl with, you know, just a regular life and job. So I hope that wasn't too, like, annoyingly not giving any answers, but um, that's just kind of where I'm at, budget-wise. But I hope that it also maybe helped some. Anyway, the last um, subject that we have to talk about is our dear friend, Jay. Um, I have a few questions for him, and I'm going to catch him sometime when he's here and ask him those questions, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so we are here with Jay for some questions. Let's see what people want to know. Um, Jay, is Jay from Detroit? Jay, are you from Detroit? No, I'm not from we'll Detroit. We'll start with an easy one. <laughs> Maybe you have a look-alike look in Detroit. I don't know. Maybe. I'm from here, this area. From here, northern New York. Yep. That is where we are. Um, okay, does Jay work outside of what he does for you? He is amazing. He seems to spend a lot of time at yours, so maybe he is retired? I am retired. I retired 10 years ago. And I just do this on the side for the fun of it. For the fun of it, because <laughs> it's so fun. Um, this is my question. What are you retired from? Well, I was I retired from Alcoa as a millwright. Alcoa, which is a... Aluminum company. Aluminum company. I, was, I don't actually, it's such a normal name around here, but I don't know, is it, it's just around here, or is it like... Yeah, Messina. It's in Messina. So, yeah, I retired from them. I, uh, I also, well, I was an aircraft, aircraft mechanic for a while, and I did a little bit of construction here and there, but... So. Cool. Um, has Jay built his own house or renovated his own house prior to my project? I built my own house about 20 years ago. And I've done a bunch of remodeling, especially kitchens and bathrooms in different places. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you seem to know about everything. <laughs> I don't know much, but <laughs> just kind of. <laughs> you, you know a lot. Um, okay, what is Jay's plan for a project after your house? My husband and I were wondering how... Wait, that's the first question. What's your project for after this house? Well, I was going to ask you if you wanted to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows? That's, that's one of the other questions that people have asked. So you'll have to wait for the video to see what I say. <laughs> okay. Okay, so my husband and I were wondering how you and Jay came together on this project. Is he a family member? You seem to get along so well. It's awesome. Thanks for letting us come along for the ride. You're welcome. 
Um, yeah, so how did we come together? How did we come together for this project? Uh, your, your dad come and ask me. Right. We go to the same church. Yeah, we go to the same church, and that's how we know each other. Yeah. Um, yeah, because one of the questions is, was Jay's involvement part of your original plan when you started working on the house, or did he just happen to become more and more involved as time went on? And whenever I started this project, like, I just knew I wanted to do it, and I really didn't have a, <laughs> a great plan. I just um, was like... I don't know, you know, I can hire different people to do different things and people that I know and stuff, but I didn't, I didn't, I, I remember actually saying to dad, like, what about Jay? Um, cause I was trying to figure out different people and I know we had talked about Jeremy, his son. Um, but cause I was like, who are different people that I know that I could hire to do different jobs and stuff. And I was like, well, what about Jay? Does he do that? And dad's like, I don't know. And so then he must've asked you. I didn't even know he was going to ask you, but, mm -hmm. and then he came over and and took a look around and said that he would I'll give do it a try. <laughs> crazy project with me. I don't think he knew what he was getting into. First, I thought you were talking about the house across the road down here, and it's way worse shape <laughs> than this one. <laughs> yeah, that house is not good. No. Um, we always called that the haunted house because, I don't, like for all of my life, that's what we just called the haunted house. I don't know huh. if there was actual reason for it or just because it was so insanely sketchy, but... Thankfully, it's not that house, and surprisingly, this house was in better shape. <laughs> mm, definitely. So, there are worse houses. <laughs> there were worse houses. Now, it's really nice. Mm. The last question is really for me, but it's about Jay. Um, what, is, wh what is the one most important thing you learned from Jay? <laughs> Which is, I've learned a lot of things from Jay. Um, a lot of building things and a lot of general things. Um, but I don't know if this is something I learned from him or like, as I don't think I do it actually well, but it's something that I've learned that I should probably do. And, um, Jay is very, very patient and like willing to be very like change, um, based on my many, many things that I change all the time, as you know. And I know some of you guys get annoyed with me, but Jay never gets annoyed with me, and he's always very patient and willing to change the plans. And also, um, yeah, because I don't, I don't do that well. And I, I tend to just, like, get things done as fast as I can. And um, Jay is much more methodical about how the best way to do it is. So that's something that I should learn from Jay, even if I haven't yet. So that is all I have for questions on the Jay category, but thank you, Jay, for all that you do here, and thank you for answering these questions. Really? Okay. Is there anything else you want to say? No. I am married, I want you to know that. <laughs> yes, so don't try to steal him away. Um, and I'm in my 70s, I'll tell you that. But he is rocking it. <laughs> okay, I feel like that was a little bit like a Jeopardy video question where it pops over to that, but Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that I answered some of your questions and helped you understand a little bit more about this crazy renovation that we are working on. It is definitely quite the process, but also so amazing, like just wonderful to see the improvements here at the house and it's coming together so beautifully. I hope you enjoyed this video. Tune in next time as we're going to be actually working at the house and making more progress making more dreams come true. So I will see you guys next time on A Drill and a Dream.